this lecture, which has to do with my studies of Islam for the last 50 years, with um, the lecture that was given before about Darwinism, whether it's scientific or not, whether it is religious or not. And in fact, I found out that um, Islam, uh, in the seventh century, already spoke about natural selection. And in fact, uh, the birth of Muhammad, the creator of Islam, is an outcome of a divine, and if you want, natural selection. In Arabic, the name of Muhammad, uh, Muhammad's got many names, but one of the most important names is Mustafa. Mustafa in Arabic means he who was selected. And the idea is that since the time of Adam, the first human being, God selected from every generation the best of all the descendants of Adam. So there was a, some kind of natural selection, one generation after the other. Until at the end, he selected the best of the best of the best of the best. And this is the Prophet Muhammad. And he chose him to give him his word, the exact word of God, and of course selected him to be the prophet that will bring to humanity the finest of all revelations. This is Islam. Understand that, that Arab, the Arabic language being the language of God, the only language of God. All the other languages are not the divine language. This is the language which was the God's, God's, um, God's uh, prophecy or God's uh, uh, holy book was transmitted. Um, that the Arabic language is the most versatile language possible and the Arabs are experts in using these language to finesse, which, um, uh, which only people that really live with this language understand. What I want to do this evening with you is to talk about the theory of war, the theory of peace, and talk about few terms which are used by, by Muslims and by Arabic-speaking Muslims. Now, there are many Muslims in the world, you know, we're talking about one billion and a quarter people in the world, we're talking about a huge quantity of people that are Muslims in the world. And it's not, an easy, it's not such a simple thing to make so many people Muslims. It means that we are talking about a culture which is highly rich, highly interesting, and highly rewarding. And that's what the most important thing. It's highly rewarding. Because it basically for the ordinary person, it's a very, very simple religion. I'm not talking about philosophers, I'm not talking about um, academicians, I'm not talking about, uh, about the great theologians, I'm talking about the simple person for whom Islam is the most rewarding of all religions. The end of the story, if he is a good Muslim, when he dies, he is going to go straight into paradise, and paradise is described in the most colorful way possible in the Quran. And um, this, uh, for this reason, I think we should speak about Islam with um, great respect. And not just, you know, as I can hear some people say, well, it's Islam, it's nothing. No, it's not. And it's not a simple thing that a person like me and others like, like uh, me in the academy um, um, in fact uh, dedicated their life for the studying of this culture. Now, Islam is not a religion in the ordinary, simple way of thinking. Islam is a culture which comprises everything. And most of all, it is a culture based on revelation and it is a culture which is based on a legal system. It is basically a legal system. It is a legal system which comprises everything. It comprises the life of the individual, it comprises the life of the society, it comprises the state. That's one thing. Secondly, it is a world religion. It's not like Judaism, which is not a world religion. 
It is connected with the chosen people and it's only for them. And it's not connected with the territory of the world, it's connected with one small country. Islam is a world religion connected.